Oh no, that's not the way. Uh, you're not listening to all I say. If you wanna know if I loved it so, it's on my list. That's where it is. one and all and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Here I am coming at you with the grand finale of my 2020 year-end spectacular-ish. This is the big one, the one you guys have all been waiting for, I would assume. This is where I count down my 25 favorite albums of 2020, along with the obligatory honorable mentions. Uh, if you guys missed either of the previous two chapters of my Spectacular-ish, I invite you to check them out. Uh, in my last video, I talked about some classic albums that uh, I discovered over the past year. I rank those, uh, and as well as some other lists that I think are unique to my channel. But yes, today is the big one, and uh, this list was aggravating but also enjoyable to put together as it always is uh, i think it was actually a little bit more enjoyable just because it was kind of unexpected as to how it turned out uh, while some of the albums were ranked about where i thought they would uh, most of the other ones were either climbed the chart more than i thought they would or slipped down the, my rankings more than i thought they would so uh, but anyway uh, yeah by the time all of the aggravation of it all was over you know the the re-listening to the albums the parsing my thoughts about them and uh, fine-tuning and tweaking and finalizing the rankings in the list and all that stuff was over. I think I'm pretty darn satisfied with the uh, the way this list turned out, uh, even though, as I said, there were some surprises in it, uh, to me even, as to how these albums uh, stacked up against each other. And another interesting thing about this year's list that uh, you guys might find as fascinating as I do is how much of it is made up of vinyl records. Yes, just a few short years ago, uh, the list would have been entirely CDs. Yeah, you go back to my early videos and my year-end lists are pretty much entirely CDs. But yeah, the prognostication that I, I predicted has pretty much become true. I've gotten more and more into vinyl as the last couple of year, years have gone on. It's just something about the experience of it. Uh, so yeah, actually about, about almost half of the list this year is made up of vinyl records. And I think that that's only going to uh, keep increasing to, to the vinyl side over as, as the years go on. So. Uh, so yes, before we get into the list itself, uh, let me just get rid of the uh, get, get the pot boiler stuff out of the way first. As with all other favorites lists or ranked lists on my channel, this one is not meant to be objective, definitive, or all-encompassing in any way. I didn't have the time or inclination to listen to everything that was released last year. Uh, I did listen to some notable albums that just didn't click with me for whatever reason, and I'm sure I missed some albums that I probably would have loved. Also, the rankings of these albums are not meant to reflect any critical criteria like lyrical profundity, instrumental finesse, innovative production, or even cultural impact. They are quite simply the albums released between January 1st and December 31st, 2020 that I personally connected with and enjoyed the most. That's why I call this list my favorite albums and not the best albums. And one other thing to bear in mind here is that the further away from number one an album is ranked, the less exact, or seriously, arguably, its ranking is meant to be taken. Uh, after all, favorites lists and ranked lists are an art and not a science. They're subject to change at any given time without notice, and they depend greatly on the mood of their makers at the time they're made. So you can disagree with this list, but you can't call it wrong. Okay, now that all that baloney is out of the way, let's go ahead and get on with the list, uh, starting with my honorable mentions. First one, though, is an EP, and uh, it, for those of you who know me, I don't do EPs very much, but this one just was excellent, and it's also a country artist, and you know, I, I'm not hugely uh, big on country either, but this guy is just fantastic. It's a country artist out of Oklahoma named Jack Settle, and uh, this is his uh, six-track self-produced EP called Middle of Somewhere, and it is just fantastic. Uh, the first song that he, you could call it a single, it's called The Rose, and it is an absolutely gorgeous, achingly beautiful ballad. One of the best songs, definitely one of the best country songs I have heard in the whole of 2020. Uh, the, the title track is great. It's, it's got a kind of a wry sense of humor to it. And, and this guy is on streaming services, I'm pretty sure. Probably, you could probably find him on Spotify. He is a the, a very close friend of a very close friend of mine. So uh, thanks to that connection there, uh, yeah personally autographed to me. But yeah, excellent, excellent stuff. Give him a try if, if you haven't yet. The next one on this list is uh, the one that I most recently acquired, which is one reason why it's no higher than an honorable mention. It is called Music Played by Humans. Uh, the, the title intrigued me uh, right off the bat. But it is by Gary Barlow, who is a member of the UK pop group Take That. And this is his fifth or sixth solo album. And the rest of his stuff is more 
uh, adult contemporary stuff with you know contemporary instrumentation but with this one he went a bit more of a big band route so so it's kind of like michael buble and in fact michael buble guests on one track on this album and yeah a bunch of uh, great international uh, classical or or uh, jazz instru uh, instrumentalists as well as james corden Yes, that James Corden appears on this album, so I would recommend this. Uh, check it out, if, if you, especially if you like uh, Michael Bublé and that kind of stuff. Now, the next three items on this list are all kind of legacy favorite artists of mine, I guess you'd say. So I pretty much couldn't go without mentioning the albums that they put out in the past year. Uh, first one is Seth MacFarlane. What can you say about Seth MacFarlane that, that I haven't already said? Uh, he's just a fantastic vocalist, right up there with Frank Sinatra. Uh, and this is his latest album, Great Songs from Stage and Screen basically just what it says on the tin. One thing that I love about him, aside from his voice, is that he, he makes unconventional song choices for a lot of his albums. So, And this one is just right up there. So if you love that kind of stuff, classic Great American Songbook stuff, this is definitely one to check out, as are all of his other albums. Now this next one, uh, it, it disappoints me only in the fact that I had to bump him down to the honorable mentions, but uh, yeah, this one is Rufus Wainwright. I have loved him since he put out his debut album in 1998, and this is his most recent one, Unfollow the Rules. Uh, excellent album. It's just, you know, there were so many other really good albums this year, and I, I just, I wished I had connected with this one more than I did, but still, this is an album I, I would recommend it. If you like some of his previous albums from the past, I recommend this one too. And then this next one is also a, a slight bit of a disappointment, only in the fact that it got uh, shunted down to the honorable mentions, but also in the fact that this may very well be this artist's swan song. Uh, unfortunately, sad to say, because he is one of my favorite artists of all time. It is Huey Lewis and the News and their album Weather. And this actually kind of borders on EP territory because it's only seven songs, uh, but that was pretty much all that they could record because you may have heard in the news that... Uh, in the news, no pun intended, that Huey Lewis has a hearing defect that is preventing him from being able to sing on key anymore. Uh, I don't think anything will surpass his great stuff from the 80s. His 80s output was by far and above the best of their entire discography, but yeah. Uh, I, I have no complaints about this one being his final album, so yeah, good stuff. Next up we have the only vinyl LP in my honorable mentions list. Don't worry, there's plenty more vinyl to come. It is Cookie Spooky in Stereo by the Aquabats. Yes, uh, and as if you couldn't tell by the uh, cover art, these guys are funny, fun, they're not meant to be taken seriously at all. Uh, the first track, Karate Body, is a, a fun one, as well as uh, the song Skeleton Inside. That's, a really, that's actually a really fun, cool rocker. It could almost be taken seriously, it's so good. And then we have Pajamas On, which is basically about uh, shopping online in your, in your underwear or pajamas. But yeah, very good stuff. Uh, in, in some ways, I'm kind of wishing I had put this in my ranked list, but uh, yeah, well, as I said, there's just so much good competition. But yeah, check these guys out. If you, if you like so, uh, music or artists that don't take themselves too seriously, check out the Aquabats. And then we have another very recent acquisition, which is the only reason why it's not ranked higher on my list. It is the latest compilation by Dr. Demento. This is called First Century Dementia, and this is fun and fascinating. And uh, for those of you who don't know about uh, Dr. Demento, a.k.a. Barry Hansen, uh, he is not only was the, ho the host of the Dr. Demento show, which is a radio show with, uh, that showcases novelty music and novelty records, funny songs, but he's also something of a music historian. And this album was uh, curated from his personal collection of songs. He has a lot of early, early recordings from the, very, the turn of the century, you know, the, the early 1900s, 10s, 20s. Well, considering how old the recordings are, the sound quality is pretty darn good. It's going to be scratchy. You're not going to be able to understand a lot of it. But this was just so much fun and so fascinating to listen to. I am so glad I picked it up. It was almost an after afterthought picking it up. But records back then were kind of a novelty in a way. So it's kind of in that way, it's not really surprising that a lot of what came out in the early days was novelty music. or And a lot of the stuff was uh, spoken word comedy sketches as well. So, but yeah. A great uh, lesson in early, early music history. It's a fantastic, fascinating album. Okay, now, on with the official list here uh, of my favorite albums of 2020. Starting at number 25, we have Saturn Return by The Secret Sisters. Uh, I've known about these uh, this duo for, oh, six years or so now. Uh, this is their fourth album, and they are basically a folk pop with a dash of country duo. Uh, great, great stuff. Nice, mellow, uh, easygoing, beautiful songs. Uh, and this was co-produced by Brandy Carlisle, this album was. But yeah, a lot of just great, great, wonderful songs. And their vocal harmonies, being sisters, uh, you can imagine, are just 
sublime, just beautiful, gorgeous stuff. So yeah, if you like this kind of a folk pop, uh, country-ish, bordering on country stuff, give these girls a try. I mean, all four of their albums are just outstanding. Next up at 24, we have something a little bit different than the uh, folk country, I guess you'd say. Uh, Ozzy Osbourne with his album Ordinary Man. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, color me surprised. I never would have thought an Ozzy Osbourne album would be on my albums of the year list. But uh, there you go. Yeah, good stuff. He, he tackles themes of, you know, mortality, growing older, you know, not being sure how many days you've got left on the earth sort of thing, which... Uh, I, know, I suppose it's a little early for me to relate to those kind of things, but uh, I mean, I guess at some point we always start questioning how many years or how many days we've got left on the on the, the Earth. But yeah, but otherwise it's just good stuff. And uh, his cover with uh, or his uh, collaboration with Elton John was it was pretty good, not as good as I was expecting it to be, but uh, that really doesn't take away anything from the album. And you know, some some serious songs, some hard rocking songs, some ballads, uh, you know, power ballads like he he's always done, even back in his Sabbath days. Uh, and some some fun songs, uh, Little Green Men, or excuse me, Scary Little Green Men is uh, was an interesting but also kind of makes you think kind of song. But yeah, very good album. I was I was surprised as, at how good it was. Coming up next is one of the biggest surprises in as far as how far down the list it slid. I thought it was going to be in the top five uh, until as late as October or November, but uh, yeah, unfortunately. It ended up uh, down below the top 20, but uh, still, don't think any less of this album for it. It is The Juice by G-Love. Uh, yeah, he's an artist that I kind of got into uh, early this year. It was actually, this album was, came out in January or February, I think it was, an early, early album. And one of the things that attracted me to it was that it was uh, co-produced or produced by Keb Mo, who's a blues artist that I've really, really come to enjoy over the year, uh, last couple of years. And because of this album, I started exploring the uh, G-Love's back catalog and really have come to really enjoy some of this stuff. Go Crazy was kind of the lead single and Kebmo features on this song as well and that was the highlight. One of my favorite songs of the year actually despite this album being so far down on the list but uh, roots, funk, rock with a little bit of hip-hop, uh, blues and stuff mixed in. You know, it's kind of like a little stew, a, a little juice of various genres I guess you'd say. So but yeah, good album I've got to say. Coming in at number 22 is After Hours by The Weeknd. Uh, yes, a, a bit further down the list than most other people uh, might rank it, but uh, this was my first exposure to The Weeknd. Uh, never really tried their stuff out before, and what, um, as you can imagine, probably imagine what made me try this out was the fact that it was a very retro 80s sound to it. So uh, from what I understand, this is very different from his, his the rest of his catalog. So don't know how much I would enjoy his other albums, but this one was fun. I'm still absorbing the lyrics, quite frankly, which is one reason why it's so far down on the list. But yeah, just uh, for, for an 80s kid like me, those delicious uh, retro beats and instrumentals are just fantastic, just gorgeous stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I'm curious. If I'm, I may check out his back catalog. I haven't uh, pulled the trigger on that yet, but yeah, uh, the, this is a very good first taste for me of the weekend. Coming in at number 21 is yet another album that uh, was uh, kind of surprised me with how far down the list it ranked. Uh, I really, really was into it at first, um, but one of the overriding themes of this year is uh, that you will notice is it's been inconsistent how I've been connecting with this album or that album. Our moods, let's face it, this year our moods have been all over the place. So I, I blame that. I blame 2020 for what it was. But uh, this album, don't let its rank far down the list uh, turn you off of it if you haven't heard it yet. It's still an excellent album and it may grow on me as 2021 progresses. But yes, Razzmatazz by I Don't Know How But They Found Me, their first full-length album. And and great, kind of like The weekend, you know, great 80s throwback stuff. I really dig that. And and some good lyrics. I've I've not been able to con to concentrate on lyrics over 2020 as much as I have music or the melodies. But uh, yeah, great stuff, and I look forward to spinning this several more times over the year. Uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see how I would rank these albums a year from now or two years from now. Uh, but yeah, this one's excellent stuff. Now, just barely making the top 20, uh, I was kind of hoping this guy would be in the top 10 because uh, he's yet another favorite artist of mine, but uh, this yet another example of how unexpectedly far down some artists' albums have slid uh, for this year's countdown. It is Randall Bramblett with his latest album, Pine Needle Fire. And uh, yes, it is not the the title of the album that made it slide down the list, you know, with the... Uh, the possibility that it could have induced PTSD with uh, the wildfires that came within 15 miles of our house. No, it's still good. It's still got his uh, self-deprecating sense of humor, a wry sense of humor in the lyrics, 
and and some good songs on here but yeah it just for some reason didn't quite connect with me like i was hoping it would but then you know i'm going to be spinning it for uh, certainly like most of his other other albums i spin it regularly uh, over the coming year so yeah hopefully i will become more fond of this album especially since i got a personally autographed edition so or well autographed not personally autographed but yeah yeah so not a bad album at all just uh, not as uh, high ranking as i was hoping for Okay, now number 19, and the only reason this one is this far down the list is because I've only been listening to it, I've only had it for a few weeks, but it is that's how good it was, is it's not even in the honorable mentions, it's up in the top 20. And it is Floor It by The Texas Gentleman, and this is their sophomore album. And The Texas Gentleman have uh, made their money, so to speak, by being session musicians on a variety of, of recordings. And this is, as I said, the, the sophomore album under their own name. And this is just great stuff. It's got such a mixture of different genres. It's got, in some tracks you hear Laurel Canyon pop from the 60s, in other tracks you hear 60s psychedelia, and you hear blues in other songs, and, and hard rock here and there. So yeah, just a great mixture of songs. A tremendously talented band, which speaks to why they are uh, uh, session musicians and have made their money doing that. I think about, what, about half of the album is instrumental, and the other half has vocals in it. But yes, the music is just amazing on this album, so I would highly recommend checking this album out. I wasn't as won over by their first album, Texas Jelly, as I was this one. So yeah, I would highly, highly recommend checking out Floor It by the Texas Gentleman. Coming in at number 18, we have Kid Crow, the debut full-length album by Conan Gray. And yeah, this guy kind of came out of nowhere. He's, uh, uh, in a way, he's kind of like uh, Troy Sivan. I guess he reminds me of Troy Sivan, but he is more uh, electro-pop than Troy Sivan. Troy Sivan is much more moody and stuff. Uh, this guy has more uh, of a, a dancey sort of stuff. That's kind of probably categorizing it wrong, but uh, great lyrics. I mean, I guess calling it dancey makes it seem like the lyrics are fluff and uh, superficial, but yeah, great lyrics about uh, growing up multiracial and growing up with uh, in uh, lower class areas and, and being a misfit and all that stuff. So yeah, excellent lyrical content on, on this album. And, uh, the, you know, the, the music, the melodies are really good, too. It's just, you know, there was, as I keep saying, so much good competition this year that this one ended up uh, outside the top 10, outside the top 15, unfortunately. But uh, still, a very good album, very much worth checking out. My number 17 ranked album this year is Treat Myself by Megan Trainer. Uh, and this was actually one of the first albums that came out in 2020, way back in January. And uh, funny thing it took me quite a while to get into this album and that was even before the pandemic hit so yeah even back in last winter i was having trouble really concentrating on and connecting with music i'm not sure what was going on so you know the pandemic didn't really help that at all although in some ways i became a little more focused on listening to music and in some ways i my focus stayed unfocused but uh, still good stuff um you know it's 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 in the middle of my ranking so yeah very good pop songs and it's probably megan trainer's most personal lyrics on any of her albums to date so yeah but yes yeah, just still she's got some of those those fun throwback uh melodies and beats to it so yeah catchy melodies and, har and harmonies but good uh, thought-provoking and meaningful lyrics as well so a very good album uh per perhaps megan trainer's best so far now, uh, number 15 on my list is uh, another example of an album that slid further down in the rankings than I thought it was going to be, uh, not as dramatic a drop as some of the other uh, examples in my list, but still, I was expecting it was going to be in the top 10, but unfortunately didn't quite make it. Women in Music Part 3 by Haim. Uh, still an excellent album. Uh, it's, it's got uh, uh, Rostam from Vampire Weekend produced it, so it's got some of that slightly world music inspired uh, instrumentation to it, so that gives it a, give it a, a really fresh uh, perspective, a fresh sound to it. And but yes, uh, lots of plenty of good songs on here. 3 a.m. was a good one, Gasoline, Los Angeles, and uh, All That Ever Mattered, and some, some other great songs on here. Uh, great, great stuff. Uh, it's a not to be missed album, and I think kind of like Megan Trainer, uh, this was Haim's best album so far. So yeah, uh, definitely listen to it if you haven't yet. Okay, now number 15, and this is going to be an interesting uh, story for you. Uh, back as little as two or three weeks ago when I was finalizing this list, this album wasn't even on the list. It wasn't even on the honorable mentions. When it comes to my year-end list, I sort of have this prejudice, I guess you'd say, against cover albums. You know, it's like, oh, it's a cover album. If it doesn't have any original material, it shouldn't be on the list. Stupid excuse, because uh, when I re-evaluated it, re-read uh, re the track listing and re-listened to it, I couldn't 
leave it off the list. I, I, it had to be within my top 20 at least. And yeah, it's just, it gives me such a warm feeling listening to this album. And that is something that I have sorely needed in 2020. Uh, it's, this, this album, listening to this album is kind of like putting on a, a sweater that your grandmother knitted for you. You know, it's just like getting a hug. And uh, this is American Standard by James Taylor. First of all, it's James Taylor. Uh, he has still got his voice after all these years. He's he hasn't lost a bit of his voice. Still fantastic. That that old sweet sound that you've, you know, you've heard since the 70s. Also, I'm a bit of a sucker for the Great American Songbook, and this album is just packed with some great songs. It opens with My Blue Heaven and Moon River, two fantastic songs. It also has uh, It's Only a Paper Moon, Pennies from Heaven, God Bless the Child, all songs that I love, and e even a song uh, or two that I wasn't familiar with until this album. Uh, as Easy as Rolling Off a Log is the one example of that to cite that I just fell in love with with uh, James Taylor's rendition of it. So, yes, it's it's a, f a feeling that I needed uh, in 2020. I, I needed some uh, audio comfort food. And that's what this is. It fits the bill fantastically. Okay, now number 14 is probably going to be a little bit of a controversial choice. Yeah, I don't think I saw it on anybody else's uh, greatest albums list, even in the honorable mentions. But hey, this is my list, so there you go. It is 2020 by Bon Jovi. What can I say? I, I like the album, and that's what this list is about. It's about the albums that I liked and connected with. And yes, this was, uh, as you can tell by its title, 2020, it was a very topical album for the past year. It talks about the pandemic. It talks about uh, the Black Lives Matter movement and other very, very important issues that we all dealt with over the past year. So, and yeah, the song stylings, the, the structure of the songs is pro probably cookie cutter Bon Jovi. So, you know, nothing really, really remarkable in that aspect. But what can I say? Yeah, I, as I said, it's this list is for the albums that I connected with, and I really connected with this one in a, in a big way. So yeah, it's, it's kind of something that I, I needed to hear. In, even though it wasn't really comforting or reassuring, it's something I needed to hear. And uh, thank you, John Bon Jovi and company, for this was, uh, in my opinion, a very, very good album, not to be missed. And next up on my list at number 13 is uh, an instrumental album. I, I almost always have one or two instrumental albums on my list, and I do have two this year. Uh, and this one, uh, like Megan Trainor's album, this was one of the first albums that came out in 2020. And it is Shapeshifting by Joe Satriani. And yes, just in the past year, I believe it was, maybe a year and a half or so, I really discovered Joe Satriani's music. I mean, I've, I've known about him forever, but I didn't really start delving into his music until less than a year ago, I think it was. And yeah, this was his 2020 effort, and it was fantastic. Excellent rocking tracks, great in instrumental rock is basically what Joe Satriani is. But he always puts a, a variety of other sounds in, a, in a, uh, his albums as well. I think if I recall correctly, he had a reggae song in here, a song with a reggae beat, and some great uh, uh, more acoustic ballad kind of stuff in it as well. So he always puts out very dynamic albums, and this is no exception. Just an amazing, excellent album. Uh, Joe Satriani has really never lost it in his 25, 30, 35 years of uh, his recording career. So another great effort by Joe Satriani. And as we inch ever closer to the top 10, here in the number 12 spot we have Zeros by Declan McKenna. Yes, I uh, discovered him with his debut album. Uh, the cover kind of looked like, uh, you know, teen pop fluff, but he really surprised me with such weighty and substantial lyrical content. I mean, he talked about a lot of very topical world stuff, you know, big world stuff. And uh, this album, he, he goes a little bit more personal uh, with these lyrics, but still just a great lyrics, uh, amazing uh, instrumentation as well. He goes for a little bit more of a, as you can kind of see by the cover, a little bit more of an 80s dance pop sort of a throwback kind of a vibe, uh, as opposed to his more singer-songwriter debut album. But still, this is a fantastic effort. I mean, if he is showing this much promise uh, by the time of his sophomore album, just you know, look out for wh what he's going to do from here. Beautiful Faces and The Key to Life on Earth are two of the outstanding tracks on this album. And it just it just goes off from there. So yeah, fantastic effort. If you have not checked out Declan McKenna, I urge you to check him out. Uh, either one of his albums uh, is great, just great. And then coming in at number 11, we have another album that slid a little bit further down the list than I thought it would, not a huge amount. I thought it was gonna be in the top 10, but didn't quite make it. It is Never Not Together by Not A Surf. An excellent album from an excellent indie band. Uh, I, I had known about Not A Surf forever, but didn't check them out until uh, their two of their albums in the early 2000s, I believe it was, and liked their stuff, 
Uh, it took a long time for them to really, really grow on me, but in the last year, especially since this album came out, I acquired several of their other back albums and have really been enjoying them uh, more and more ever since. And so, yeah, this is this is just right up there with the albums that I've listened to of Not A Surf. They've never really diminished in quality at all. So, yeah, this is just great stuff. It reminds me a little bit of uh, a classic band of mine, the Connells, a favorite band of mine that I've uh, remembered since my uh, shortly after my teen years. But yes, just great, great indie rock stuff here. Uh, not to be missed. Never Not Together by Not A Surf. Okay now, cracking the top 10, uh, to my surprise probably as much as anybody else's out there, is uh, what may be the strangest album on this list. So some of you guys out there, a lot of you guys are going to be scratching your heads, shaking your heads, wondering what's with this guy. But then again, like I said, it's my list. Uh, but yes, it is the second of two instrumental albums on my list. It is called Not Our First Goat Rodeo. And yes, it is a mixture of classical, bluegrass, and jazz. Yes, very strange, but very, very fun also. Uh, uh, actually, it's not entirely instrumental. I take that back. There are a couple of songs that are vocals on here. But yes, uh, Grammy Award winning cellist Yo-Yo Ma. He's won, I think I, think I read, 17 Grammys. So, <laughs> and uh, Stuart Duncan, Edgar Meyer, and Chris Thiele. And one of them plays the banjo. Another one plays the uh, uh, violin or fiddle. And I, I can't remember the exact instrumentation uh, credits amongst these guys, but suffice to say, this is such a fun, enjoyable album, and it's it's one of those easygoing albums that I really, really needed this year. And uh, yes, they put out their first uh, album, The Goat Rodeo Sessions, back in 2011. So yes, nine years later, they put out a, a sequel album to this, and, and I've got both of them, and they're both very, very enjoyable. Lots of fun, light listening. So yeah, and I say bluegrass, but you know, the bluegrass is not that annoyingly scratching your head kind of thing bluegrass it's much more easygoing bluegrass is what i'm trying to say but yes i love this album as you can tell it's in my top 10 but yeah i it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea but it's certainly mine that's fantastic fun fun album now number nine and the list is going to get more normal from here don't worry uh, number nine is an album that's been on a lot of people's lists this year and for darn good reason i think it is folklore by taylor swift and yeah the only reason it isn't ranked higher than here is uh, because uh, as I mentioned, I think earlier in this list, I've had a little bit of trouble parsing lyrics in a lot of albums uh, this uh, past year. Taylor Swift is like a musical chameleon. I mean, she does a great pop album. I, I didn't get into her until her 1989 album, and so I've been more familiar with her pop stuff. Have missed pretty much her entire country discography. This is more of a folk album and not a straight country album, but still, if a folk album is this good. I can only imagine how great her country albums are. And and I've been I've been given a couple recommendations from friends about the uh, albums from her the country part of her discography. But still, this is just more pop leaning stuff as well as the more acoustic folk leaning stuff. So a great fantastic album, uh, very worthy of a lot of the the, the hype that it's getting uh, gotten in the past year. So yeah, wonderful stuff. I, I'm looking forward to listening to this one more and more over the coming years. And now coming in at number eight is uh, one of the few examples of an album that ended up ranking higher than I thought it was going to, as opposed to slipping down the list. Uh, yes, I, I thought this one was going to be around number 15, between 15 and 20. It is Gaslighter by The Chicks, uh, formerly known as The Dixie Chicks. And this album basically proved to me that there is pretty much nothing that Jack Antonoff can't do. Uh, you know, he's, he's touched on how many genres now, and now he's dipped his foot into uh, country music and came up with a pretty darn good set of songs. Um, it took a long time for this album to grow on me uh, because the the singles, uh, the title track Gaslighter as well as March March, were kind of. I mean, I don't think you know March March was more politically topical in terms of lyrics. Gaslighter not so much maybe, but the whole political atmosphere of America in the in 2020 gave it an ex a, a, a double meaning of being possibly political. But yeah, those two singles kind of made the album seem better than it was going to be but there are still plenty of songs on here. I'm kind of partial to Texas Man, I like that one, as well as uh, My Best Friend's Weddings and Juliana Calm Down, two other standout songs on this album, so I highly recommend this album if you have not heard it yet. Even if you don't like country, give this a try, because it, it, especially if you like Jack Antonoff and the stuff that he's done, this is another another hit, you know, so something that you know Antonoff has that Midas touch. He can turn anything into gold. Now, my number seven album ranked a few spaces lower than I was hoping it would. Uh, he's one of my favorite artists, that's why I was hoping it was going to be in my top five, but didn't quite make it, but still a very, very good album. 
Heartbreaker Please by Teddy Thompson. Uh, yes, he is, as I said, one of my favorite artists. I've, I've been paying attention to him since the beginning. Uh, this is his sixth solo album, I believe, and lots of great, great songs on here. He takes a bit more of a pop approach to this one, whereas the rest of his dis discography is a little bit more singer-songwriter with a little bit of a touch of folk. But yeah, still an outstanding batch of songs on here. At a Light is the second song in here, so it's great. And uh, Record Player, it's got uh, you know lyrics about music, so I've, I'm partial to that one. The title track, title track is excellent, and Brand New is another uh, really, really good song. Uh, I did a Now and Then video on Teddy Thompson, this album, as well as one of his others. So if you want more detail, check that out. But yeah, I also urge you to check out this album. An excellent uh, installment from one of my favorite artists, Teddy Thompson. Now, clinching the number six spot on my countdown is Imploding the Mirage by The Killers. And uh, this, a lot of people say this was a great return to form by The Killers. Uh, I kind of say that half-heartedly because I'm one of the few people, it seems like, that actually enjoyed their last album, Wonderful, Wonderful. I thought it was just fine. Uh, but yeah, this, was, this is probably their best album in a good ten years. And that, that's been the consensus between uh, amongst critics is, you know, the best album in quite a while, and yeah, I would have to agree with that. Uh, so some great uh, guest appearances on here. Uh, Katie Lang and Wise Blood appear on two different tracks, and uh, but just some great stadium-filling anthems and very finely crafted rockers on here. And there are a couple of tracks on here that I noticed anyway that uh, sounded a little bit like Tears for Fears, an 80s group, with kind of an unusual, uh, almost ethnic-sounding percussion elements in them. So yeah, they throw in a little bit of uh, this and that uh, for in terms of you know changing up their sound just a little bit. But it's still the killers, and it's still just fantastic stuff. And yeah, that's why it's, it's number six. Didn't quite make my top five, but uh, that is, you know, it's still amazing, an amazing album. Okay, now here we are heading into the top five, and incidentally, these next two albums could end up easily swapping positions, uh, depending on my mood, and because honestly, they're both just excellent, finely crafted albums. The best female pop albums of 2020, in my opinion. Uh, that, that kind of gives them away, but uh, not which is which. So let me end the suspense and tell you number five on my list is Future Nostalgia by Dua Lipa. An excellent album. Uh, this was my first exposure to Dua Lipa. Uh, this is her sophomore album. I never have checked out her first album, but when I realized that there were, um, this album was pretty much slathered with uh, throwback 80s influences, I was on board, and I, I had to check out the singles, and I was won over, and the album is just as good as all the singles. I could cite any track on this album, well, except one, and and they're, they're all just fantastic. So yeah, if you like uh, 80s throwback pop, with a female vocalist. Uh, you cannot go wrong with Dua Lipa and her album Future Nostalgia. It is fantastic. It's an amazing album. And since the proverbial cat's out of the bag with my number five pick, you guys have probably already guessed what my fourth favorite album of the year is. It is Chromatica by Lady Gaga. Uh, yes, fantastic. I kind of like The Killers. This was, in my opinion, her best album in years. Uh, excellent singles and the rest of the album, uh, not much on the rest of the album, uh, really dipped below the quality of those singles, honestly. Uh, Stupid Love, Rain On Me, Babylon, and I mean, Free Woman is another fantastic song on here. I mean, this is just first-rate pop from top to bottom. You cannot go wrong with this album. If you like uh, turn of the millennium pop, you know, 2010s pop, this is just, you know, and, and if you like Gaga's first one or two albums, it's fantastic. You cannot go wrong with this. Excellent album, very worthy of my top five. Coming in at number three on my list is Heartbreak Weather by Niall Horan. What can I say? I mean, who would have thought just a few short years ago that, uh, you know, when they were still in One Direction, that both Niall Horan and Harry Styles, for that matter, would develop such distinctive solo careers in, in pop? I mean, they're both fun-loving but serious and in different ways. I mean, they just have very different styles. I mean, Harry's music might be a little bit more playful, a little bit more dancey inspired, whereas Niall's is a little bit, a little bit more singer-songwriter, a little bit more moody. But yeah, just a, a first-rate bunch of songs on here. I mean, it, it's hard to tell at this point who's going to have greater career longevity. I mean, Harry Styles has a distinctive image, you know, and, and you know his songs are kind of some, some way derived from that. But uh, Niles, the quality of Niles' songs is just way up there. They give each other a, a run for the money, honestly. Uh, Bend the Rules is one of my favorite songs on here. Nice to Meet You was a great single. And Cross Your Mind, I like that one as well. And, oh gosh, No Judgment. Uh, there, there are a few other songs on here as well that I just absolutely loved. Uh, some of my favorite songs of the year come off of this, this record. So, 
excellent, fantastic stuff. If you are dis dismissing Niall Horan or even Harry Styles as One Directioners, don't. Give them a try. You won't regret it. Okay, now, my runner-up for Album of the Year, well, my personal Album of the Year, is Crash Test Kid by Sammy Brew. This is just amazing. This is his sophomore album, and if he is this good, just two albums in, and at such a young age, I think he was still a teenager when he did, did this album. Uh, you know, just, just look out. I mean, he is not getting nearly enough attention. Uh, I, I covered this album, by the way, in detail in a Now and Then video earlier on, back in the summer, I think it was, so check that one out. But yes, uh, his first album, which is also excellent, that dealt more with love songs, you know, the, the traditional kind of stuff that a young singer-songwriter would do. But this one covers more bigger world issues, I guess you'd say. Uh, Die Before You Live is a song about, you know, finding your place in the world, your, wor your worth in the world, uh, you know, while you still can, while you're young, en young enough to do so. And uh, other songs like Skate Park Doomsday Blues deal with dysfunctional family life and that kind of thing. So, yes, he talks about some, some weighty topics in this album and just the lyrical work on this album is just unbelievable. It's outrageous how good this kid is. But yeah, fantastic stuff. Excellent album. And yeah, I, I highly, well, obviously I highly recommend it if it's, if it's my runner-up for album of the year. So yeah, excellent, fantastic stuff. Check him out. Uh, I only hope he gets much more attention than he's gotten thus far because he really, really deserves it. Kind of like Declan McKenna. Just another excellent, uh, wise uh, beyond his years. Okay, now here we have arrived at The Moment of Truth, my number one favorite album of 2020. It is Live Forever by Bartice Strange. You probably haven't heard of this guy. I have I have yet to see a YouTuber who put this album at number one on their list, and I don't don't understand why. Uh, I found out about this guy from uh, Rolling Stone's Twitter feed. Uh, they, they post stories about you know up and coming artists all the time, and saw this guy and read his story and listened to a couple of his uh, uh, the singles on YouTube videos of his singles, and he was fantastic. Uh, I, I just uh, he has such a mixture of genres in this. I mean, if you want to talk about a dynamic album in terms of genre influences, this is, well, at the top of the list, not just at the top of my album's list, but... And all of those influences still work together in the album, strange as it might seem. He, you, you hear some hard rock on some of the songs, and some, some hip-hop and R&B on other songs, and there's even some, you know, a little bit of blues, and I think there might even be a little bit of country, if I remember correctly, hidden somewhere in one of these songs. But yeah, just a wide, such a wide, diverse array of influences that somehow fit together in a, an amazingly cohesive and compelling album. I mean, I highly recommend this album if you have not listened to it yet. Sammy Brew came pretty close, but still, this one just edged him out uh, as for, for my album of the year. It's excellent, fantastic stuff. I, I can't wait to see what this guy does next. Amazing. Whew, is it over? Is my spectacular-ish over already? It seemed kind of short, but then it seemed kind of long, too. All these hours of sit in front of the camera, you know. But it was worth it, honestly. As trying and tribulating as this year was, as 2020 was, it ended with a pretty darn good array of music to choose from. Wouldn't you say? I hope you feel the same way. And I hope you enjoyed this list. I hope you found some stuff that you weren't aware of, that you're willing to try out. Uh, you know, trust your Uncle Tom with his music recommendations, won't you? But anyway, that'll do it for my albums of the year for 2020 and for my 2020 year-end spectacular-ish. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Have a great and happy new year, everyone. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.